It's time. Hellboy has entered Brawlhalla for what might be the biggest and most unexpected crossover in the game's history. It's also the biggest content patch in a while, but you know, of course, I wouldn't be reviewing it without balance involved, so let's just get all that content out of the way first. Right out of the gate, of course, we've got the Hellboy UI Takeover, which you can see has some pizzazz on it. And because it's a special event, it means you get extra gold on login for, you know, your Brahalla wallet. The test map War Shuttle that you could have found in Experimental if you queued long enough. It's been given a Hellboy makeover, it's been renamed Apocalypse, and it's entering the 1v1 and 2v2 queues. Of course, we've got the Hellboy skins. Uh, it's Hellboy Cross. It's Daimyo Mordex. It's Nimu 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 Dusk and and Gruagok Teros. I don't know these names. Don't don't make fun of me. Along with that, we've got an animated avatar, an animated podium, and finally, closing out the big content stuff, we got an entire new game mode. It, it, it's zombies, it's, it's man versus machine, whatever you want to call it. I, I think they call it the horde. Uh, I should double check that. I was playing it with Boomy last night, and let me tell you, Nye, Nye's broken, alright? Queen Nye, finally meta in something. Hell yeah. Let's go Nye. There's also some smaller quality of life things that I think are still worth mentioning. Training mode and replays got some nice UI adjustments, some nice tweaks, most notably. You can see the hotkeys for frame by frame analysis, so if you're curious, you don't have to ask anymore a lot. That's a question that I got a lot, uh, especially when I was looking over replays in these videos. And you can also go frame by frame on controller now. If you click the right stick and you know move the right stick around, that frame by frame is also a lot easier. The camera for War Shuttle, or I guess I should call it Apocalypse now, it's been improved and the kill boxes were brought in slightly horizontally. And the biggest one in my opinion is that item spawn rates now change based on the number of players in the game, which I think is super awesome. Now there aren't a billion weapon spawns when a 2v2 game goes into the final 1v1 duel. That might not have seemed like it was a big deal until you fought someone just constantly chucking weapons your way and it was pretty much little to no risk because they spawn so frequently. So bless BMG for this change. Thank you Papa TWK and everyone else involved, of course. The only weapon that changed this patch was Orb, and it's actually an Orb change that I was specifically asking for, so, you know, I'm pretty stoked about it. Basically, the recovery got some power shifted around in exchange for mobility, so now it reaches higher, it moves faster vertically, but the force also diminishes the longer you travel. There's a couple reasons why I wanted this change. First off, I think the orb recovery was relatively weak just as a recovering option, so not using on stage, not using to kill just to get back to the stage. Anything with a slight disjoint could beat it flat out, and kind of beat it flat out easily. It had the problem of short vertical distance, low priority, and long active frames. You know, those problems on their own aren't necessarily bad. For example, scythe recovery. It doesn't have the best vertical distance, but it also has great priority or something like Gun Recovery, which has a lot of active frames, but it also has great vertical distance. But Orb had all three of those negatives put into one move, so it was a little underwhelming in recovering purposes. You know, using it as an attack, again, is a different story. Uh, and now it has one of those three negatives, at least slightly mended, so I'm happy with that aspect of the change. Another reason why I wanted this change is because escaping outward from Orb, whether that's dodging out or up or jumping away, it was kind of difficult to deal with because you had to commit relatively hard just to cover one option, and now that the orb recovery reaches higher sooner, you don't necessarily need to blow an extra jump just to cover some of those outward options, so I think that's a nice little gameplay change. The diminishing force was another thing I wanted for this attack because it seemed kind of off that it would have the full force despite hitting it with some of the last active frames, so I'm really happy that this was also changed, even though it'll make killing slightly harder with orb. And there's a bunch more attacks that I think should get this weakening hitbox treatment. Things like Lance Sare or Cannon Sare, Katar Recovery, Lance Recovery, etc. You know there's a lot of them moves that have a lot of mobility and a lot of active frames that still hit with the full force, even if only the very end touches you. And I'm not saying to nerf these moves flat out, more so shift around power, like what happened with orb recovery, I think this is a very good change. 
Signature changes were mainly aimed at tuning down some of the top tiers while also bringing up some of the perceived weaker legends. So I'll start with some of the nerfs and then I'll move on to the buffs. First up we got Diana who received slight nerfs to all of her bow sigs. So Ensig now has reduced force both when you hit the opponent, when you grab him up, and also when someone else runs into the second half of that shot. Both have slightly reduced force now. And her side sig and down sig both have less backward coverage, which yeah, I'm a fan of. I don't like getting hit when I'm behind Diana. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't get hit. It was someone else. But my main also got nerfed. Fates neutral and down orb were nerfed a bit. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm being sarcastic here. I, I asked for these nerfs. And sig has plus one startup and plus two recovery frames, and down sig also got plus four recovery frames. Not the hugest nerf, but you know, it hurts a little bit. Nah, it's, it's actually not a big deal. The nerfs weren't big at all. Speaking of nerfs that aren't really that big at all, Mordex, he got nerfs to Scythe and sig and Gauntlet down sig, but really it's not that big of a deal. Scythe and sig plus three recovery frames. A little significant decreased force, a little significant, but the move is still amazing. You know, you don't worry about it. Dancing on gauntlets, plus one startup, slightly decreased force on both versions. Ah, eh, don't worry about it. Ensig on gauntlets got minus two startup. I don't really think that's gonna do much. Gauntlet Ensig on Mordex really isn't that great. Dancing on gauntlets, Ensig on Scythe, still the crowning jewels of his kit in my opinion. Ada got a really small change to her gun side sig, although, you know, it's more of a bug fix than anything. Last patch, you were able to position the side sig so that the last shot wouldn't connect, and you could get some huge, wacky, true combo out of it. Although, I will say, it's incredibly situational, I've actually never seen someone do it in the actual game, so. Either way, the final shot now has an increased hit window, I think to try and avoid that, it still might be possible. I'm not gonna lab that out because I don't think it's really worth your time trying to learn something like that. But to report the facts here, I can't leave this change unnoticed. Both Isaiah's Cannon Side Sig and Jiro's Sword Side Sig got a significant buff in force. Two changes that I was also advocating for, so <laughs> hell yeah. Let's go Jiro, let's go Isaiah. You know, one day you might be a mid-tier. Why not? <laughs> Warms my heart. Finally, my favorite character in the game, Rayman. Rayman! He received minus two startup on his gauntlet end sig and minus three startup on his gauntlet side sig, which might actually be a, a good meaty buff. I, I said it for Jiro, I said it for Isaiah. Let's go, Rayman. Hell yeah. Unfortunately, as I woke up bright and early on Wednesday morning to take a look at the balance notes, I looked and I thought to myself, well, this will not be a tough video to edit. Gauntlets, Scythe, and Bow, which are pretty much considered to be the top tier weapons by most pro players, they weren't changed at all. Some of the weaker weapons, namely Axe, Lance, Hammer, they weren't tinkered with either. The top tier characters in the game, a few of them were nerfed, but nerfed in such a small way that they're probably still at the top. Maybe, maybe Fate isn't top three in the game anymore but honestly her orb probably still has the strongest overall sig spread don't get me wrong i think the plus four recovery frames on down sig was a big nerf but i don't think it's enough to make her not top tier anymore mordex's gauntlet down sig still sends at that brutal angle which sets up perfectly for a gauntlet edge guard so even though it doesn't kill as early it's still really terrifying and his scythe end sig is still incredibly strong even with the added recovery, even with the reduced force, I mean, so much of Mordex's kit leads into that end sig. On top of it already being a great anti-air, uh, it's Mordex is chilling. All right, he's he he's been chilling. He's been chilling, and he's still chilling. If you can't really tell by my tone and general demeanor, I don't think this patch will shift around the meta very much. Keep in mind, I'm talking about the top level of play. But I do want to add that a lot of top players are talking about the meta being stale and boring. But honestly. I don't really think that's the case, because it's not like there's still not a lot out there to discover, and obviously, if your weapon isn't the best, if your character that you love just gets beat out by top tiers, that sucks, but Brawlhalla still is a very well balanced game. I think if you practice hard, if you put in the time, you can make it work. I think a prime example is Wilson, who, with a character that I don't think anyone is really saying is top tier, is able to still win and get top three. Top three! 
at Final Round, which was the first offline major of the year. I mean, if that ain't inspiration for you, then I don't know what is. Overall, as a competitive player, this patch was a little underwhelming, but if I take a step back and look at it from a casual perspective, it's pretty sick! Hellboy crossovers, quality of life changes, an entire new game mode, I mean it's got a little bit of everything that you could want in a content patch. Hopefully the next big balance patch packs a little bit more of a punch, but for now I'll be happily playing Horde, I think. Unless it's called something different. <laughs> Thanks for watching my video. See you guys next week.